Superhero. Superhero. YouTube is quiet. Oh shit, there's everybody. What's up? It's like quiet is the YouTube and then all of a sudden posts away. How's everybody doing this morning? Afternoon, whatever time it is for you. Alright, little screw. You may not sit in my crotch. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? My allergies today are kicking my ass. <laughs> Mini sniffles. Much, much congestion. Uh, it could be better, I guess. It's quiet. It's quiet today. Nobody's around. The square's empty. Taking iPods apart. Living the dream. Evening, David. Morning for me. Evening for you, I assume. Alright, so it looks like we got all the screws out. Uh, this is a iPod Touch. I believe it's a 6th gen. Um, pretty sure it is because the home button's not made onto the shielding. On the 5th gens, there's a piece that goes across here that the home button sits on. On the 6th gens, I'm pretty sure they went to this style. Where the home button is actually mounted on top of the charging port. Um, this iPod's been apart, evidently, before. Uh, all the all the stickers seem to be pulled. I believe the guy, the guy that brought this to me, I believe, was going to try to fix it himself. And then he realized, hey, this thing's soldered on. So he brought it in and was like, hey, man, how much you fix this? Told him $55. Let's see if I can not mangle this sticker here. Oh, I gotta blow my nose. Well, welcome, Lima. Uh, the iPhone 8 will be announced in like one or two weeks. It's August something. August like 22nd or something like that. Or 16th, I don't know. I can't remember. What's up, Miles? <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Origami to get back together. Yeah, they're not too bad. Like, if, if you've never done one, they seem really daunting. But if you kind of lay out your screws in the pattern they come out in, um, it's actually not terrible to take apart. Uh, I found the key is to take, so let me switch this to the main camera, if my nose will stop itching. So what I do is I take everything out from the bottom here, and then take all my screws out from the top and actually flip the whole assembly over, and it allows you to gain access to all the ribbons on the back. Um, it, it's, it's a decent amount of work, but it makes it easier to manage. So... I'll show you here in a second once we get it apart. The whole, I, I assume that's probably how they put them together, to be honest. They probably just fold the whole thing over. Because it seems a lot easier than, than trying to sit there and finagle with the cables underneath the board. I got my shitty tweezers today. Well, that one's not coming out, so it's staying where it is. 
Alright, so I'm going to look and see and see what needs to be lifted here. I'm pretty sure this is all soldered. Yeah, it is. Um, since this is all going to stay together, I don't think I have to disconnect anything here. I just have to pull my speaker back, pull my headphone jack and my charge port back, and we should be able to slide it all out as one piece. Alright, headphones out. Now it's just charging port. Iron charging port's out. Alright, so we need to lift our battery. Um, looks like the tab that's supposed to be on this one is not there. Or is it down here at the bottom? I think it might be at the bottom. Yeah, there it is. So it's got these little pull tabs down here for the uh, the tape. Let's see if I can get it in close enough where you all can see it. See the little pull tab right there? Um, just like the iPhone, so you can grab that and pull it out. On the older iPods, that tab was on the side. So, that should allow us to get under the battery. Looks like the other pull tab has already been attempted to be pulled. And they messed up because it's broken off under the battery. Let's see if I can get this out without catching the thing on fire. I got a charge port cover there that came off. Come here, a little full tab. Yeah, they tried to tried to get this one out. Looks like, but looks like they had some troubles. Once we get it started, though, should come out here. There we go. Those pull tabs are like those quick release things that you can put on the wall. Leaked aqua dot. Oh yeah, the the repair standards that they have so how they judge if they're going to be warranted or not what do i think about wild pcs uh, i don't know i don't really know the company that well so no opinion <laughs> all right let's take out our motherboard screws here there's only three i think on this board Then we should be able to flip the whole assembly upside down. Alright, let's see. Yep, alright. So everybody is loose now, so we can just flip it up. And we have access to all our ribbon cables now. So we can go in here and release the Wi-Fi. Release the LCD here. Release the camera. Assembly from the back there. Come on. Thank you. And the touch. And then everything's out. Alright. So I assume the battery is most likely dead in this thing. But I'm going to go ahead and flip everything out here. <clears throat> I usually desolder the battery on these, but... Like I said, I don't think that this battery has enough juice in it because obviously it's probably not been charging. Oh, the camera assembly came apart from the housing. Awesome. It's all right. We'll glue that back together. These camera housings are pretty crazy if you look at them. So it's got just a little plastic frame with a focal lens in it. And it actually just sits over the actual uh, capturing assembly like the actual uh, photogenic piece that captures the image but this is glued on top of it it's kind of all 
I don't know if I'll be able to glue it back down. I can just sit it back on top of it though. It should be okay. Yeah, it sits down on top of it. Let me see if I can tack it in place. Just melt the frame a little bit to it. If only I had an ultrasonic welder. Thank you. And one side kind of held down there. There we go. Get the lens back on there. Actually, I didn't even have to disconnect the, the LCD ribbons. I can leave those connected. Didn't even think about that. How about them apples? Literal apples. iPhone baseball is programmed to the phone yes the baseband is programmed to the phone if you're gonna switch baseband's they do make programmers for them <sighs> they are out on the market I don't know what all models they cover but I do know they have programmers out there for baseband alright so we got everything here Get our camera folded back out of the way so the screen can sit flat. Actually, I want it the other way because I'm right handed. It'd be easier for me. Alright, let me switch you back to microscope camera. What's up, Mark? So anytime I'm removing a flex like this, I like to just flood it with leaded solder, and that way it comes off easier. So I'm going to go ahead and get some leaded solder set up here. We're going to put some flux down over the pads and then let this heat up. Just relaxing. Well, hopefully I'll be doing that a little later today. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit all these pads with some leaded solder. Now you can use hot air or you can use your iron. Um, I'm going to try it with just the iron. Usually as long as you're keeping your iron right where the lifting point is, you won't have any problems. So I'm just putting a little upward pressure on it. come back and clean all our pads up here hot air is easier there if you're worried about it I don't knock using hot air um, I just find it easier that I don't have to turn the hot air on I can just take it off um, I will have to transfer the speaker over to this flex it looks like about it the home button and everything are already there so yeah, it looks like just the speaker is going to have to be transferred. So now I need to wick these down and re-add some solder. Good 
Do, 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 do. And then we need to clean up our old adhesive. Let that get up to temp. Just very light pressure. Do not, you're not sitting here and trying to like scrub the board. Like my iron is just barely keeping the braid down against the board. Uh, that way you're not going to scrub any pads off. You're not going to fuck anything up. About to make dinner? Damn. Everybody's time travelers around here. Alright, so let's clean up this area and get rid of the old adhesive. That way when we stick our new adhesive down that's on the actual flex, it will stick flush. And not up off the board, causing issues. Nice and smooth, like a baby's bottom. Let's turn our brightness down a little bit here. All right, so that's all clean and now ready for our new port. So let's go ahead and get our speaker off this assembly over here. So I need to peel the home button up out of the way. Our two points that are soldered for the bottom speaker. All you have to do is just take your iron, a little upward pressure, and it comes right off. We'll take our cover with us. So we have something to put back over it. So, old flex in the garbage. New flex. you get one side to kind of grab down you can tack the other and then tack the other side back down to flush all right so I'm gonna take my tweezers hold this down get these as flush as I can get them there we go still no t-shirt I'm not sure where do you live I don't know how some some of the international shipping is sometimes absolutely terrible and will take forever all right so let's go ahead and put our home button in place where it's supposed to be and then we need to get our 
speaker flex underneath there we go all right so that's how it sits there home buttons in place speakers in place that is all good forgot to put my little cover over it So the flex is ready to be put back on. Let's bring our screen and board back over. Now I'm going to peel the adhesive. And it's not adhesive. I thought it was. I don't know why they put the fucking thing on there then. Yeah, doesn't matter. We can get it lined up pretty well by eye. there okay just kind of press it down flat now I want to tack my ends here so I'm gonna load up our iron with a little bit of solder if I can get it to touch okay That end's tacked. The key is when you're tacking these down, you want to make sure that you keep the flex as flat as you can against the screen or against the body. Um, the flatter it is against it, the better it's gonna it's gonna take. You don't have to worry about any type of insufficient amount of solder or anything in between the two all right so let's go ahead and add a flux all the way across uh, I got offered an iPhone 6s but it starts and just shows a blue screen reboots tell me it sounds like long sheer damage but I want you to import it before I buy it uh, blue screen uh, it can be a few things. Uh, 6S, I don't know if they cause blue screen from long screen damage or not. It's, I guess it's possible. Uh, the 6S series, I think the bottom right screw hole is a nightmare if they go too far down into it. So, my suggestion would be if you're going to buy it, be prepared for either long screw damage, NAND damage, or not NAND damage, NAND corruption, or, um, Maybe as simple as maybe a, a camera flex or something. So whenever I tap these down, I, I hold it there for a second. That way the solder will run through the eyelet down onto the pad and it'll fill in the the pad in the eyelet um, if you don't give it enough heat or enough solder it won't wick through like that and you'll get a, uh, a dry joint alright so that's all our pads they're all soldered now let me clean those up What's up, mobile? Alright, so... Just gonna roll the swab across it. Then dry side. Clean it up a little bit. I'll grab a new one. All 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, is not all customers or, or people you're buying from are honest. So you're going to get a lot of people that will say one thing and then later on you'll find out that that's completely a lie. So the best thing to do is trust your gut on what you think it is. And then you don't have to worry about it if you're going to get screwed over because you kind of know worst case uh, scenario. I'm pretty good mobile. How are you? Um, this guy evidently did his own screen because his home button has been torn apart. It's not good, not good. Looks like he's put some adhesive all over it, trying to get it to stay down. But that's not working for him. See if we can get that a little more centered for him. All right, so that's all done. Let's fold our flex under like it is factory. Let's grab our adhesive covering strips. Uh, rip this one a little bit so it's not going to cover perfectly. I was taking it off. Put our other piece over. It's conductive. Let's put a piece of captain tape down underneath that since that's not completely covered. That's a EMI shielding cover piece. I wonder what testing they do while they're making these to tell if the EMI like shielding is needed or not, like the tape they use. Or they just use it in specific areas, maybe where there's a high switching frequency ICs or something. I always kind of wondered how they determine where it's needed where it's not. Alright, there we go. Some captain tape down over top of it now. Preventing any unnecessary shorts. Alright, let's put it back in the frame. Fold our battery back into place. Oh, the home button fell out again. I'll just leave it off to the side for now. Chris FYI, the link on your Facebook page tries to do HTTPS connection back to your home page, which airs out. HTTP goes through fine. Was looking for contact info for a friend. I want to put a link in your website or Facebook page, YouTube here as well, come October. Okay, thank you, Greg. Yeah, I think we had problems with that before. Um, a little while back. Where it, uh, where it was not happy with the, the HTTPS link. Alright, so let's... Connect our cameras back up here. The reason it probably doesn't like the HTTPS is because I think that was one that I had linked directly while I was signed in. While you're signed into Facebook, it's actually a secure connection, which I found out the hard way because, um, not the hard way, but found out while I was working on uh, one of the company's networks, um, the 
the boss there wanted to block Facebook access through the router. Well, it turns out every connection made to Facebook is an HTTPS connection. So HTTPS, the only way to block that is to block all connections that way through a router. You can't block Facebook itself. It won't work. So I had to go through on each computer and tell the computer itself just to redirect Facebook to the uh, local address which was fun and exciting and then after doing that they complained that things weren't working on other stuff and I was like well I was like that, that doesn't really have anything to do with it but okay so I had to go back and undo all of them. Which I found another interesting thing. Windows 10. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of Windows Defender or what it is. But usually on a Windows computer the folder uh, access is granted to whatever you grant it to. So if it's granted to admin or whoever. Um, you can... You can go in and, and edit the host file and do whatever the fuck you want in system because you're admin. But evidently on Windows 10 now, god damn it, plug in. Uh, evidently on Windows 10 now, um, the uh, the rights are granted to trusted installer, which I assume is uh, something to do with Windows Defender. So it does like checks before anything is installed. Uh, which makes the process a little more annoying. Uh, not necessarily harder, but just annoying. So, uh, I had to go in every computer and fucking change the rights to how they could be edited. And then evidently after you change the rights off of Trusted Installer, if you want to change it back to that, you can't. Which makes no sense. Let's see, do I have this upside down? I feel like I have it upside down. Do I have it upside down? No, I don't. I don't think so. Maybe I do. Looks kind of dark in here. Ah, uh, it's because of the light coming through the window. It is not dark in here, I promise. Alright, fucker. There you go. I was like, how the hell did that go in? Now we know. Alright, so I just realized I'm gonna have to grab that charge port out of the garbage. Because there's still a screw in the ear speaker. That I need. Okay, so let me grab that. Or the headphone jack, excuse me. Come here, Mr. Screw. Out of the headphone jack. Alright, got my screw out. Alright, let's start putting screws back in here. Get this some um, somewhat secured down. I'll tell you one thing, that the one thing that sucks about putting new flexes back in. Yeah. Google is your friend for what? Yeah, they've made Windows Defender a much more invasive program. It used to be something that you could kind of handle and, and deal with, and now it's just become a little more intrusive. Used to be you could just go turn it off. Now it's it's becoming more of a pain in the dick to deal with. All right, got that screw in. Knock that screw off. Windows 10 is shit. Uh, I like Windows 10. Um, it's just got some quirks that I don't like. 
I mean, it's... I wouldn't say Windows 10 shit, just because... Like, it's, it's a very intuitive OS. As far as new hardware goes, and new software and stuff that you put on it. When you install something, you pretty much don't have to do anything now. It pretty much sets everything up for you. Um, sometimes I feel like their their self driver install stuff can be kind of annoying. Especially when you don't want it to install a driver. That's the only thing that I don't like. An issue with trackpads? Uh, I've noticed some of the... I've noticed some of the trackpads had issues from the drivers themselves. I haven't noticed any other issues otherwise. I know uh, the HPs that we had, uh, several of them had issues with trackpad drivers being incorrect from the companies that made them. So when you would install the new drivers, like, as soon as you touch the trackpad, like, it would shoot across the fucking screen, but... Like, several of the HPs we had, like, I had to downgrade the drivers because the newer drivers that were released by whatever company, I think it was Alps, um, like, anytime I would install a new driver, like, the, the trackpad would become super sensitive. So, like, barely touching it would shoot it across the screen, and you could turn the trackpad sensitivity all the way down, and it still would just fly across the screen. All right, so I'm pulling the old adhesive off here. Um... I want to put new stuff on. Microsoft wants to own trackpad drivers. I don't know why they would want to own that. Yeah, Windows, t Windows 7 is better for some hardware. I agree with that. Um, I especially noticed on Windows 10 for me, I don't know if, if other people have issues, but, um, I have multiple things that use the RS-232 interface for serial to USB, and Windows 10 is extremely, extremely moody with those devices. Like, my, my DC power supply uses an RS-232 interface, and, uh, it'll work sometimes. I mean, it, it just does what it wants to do. Um, the uh, the NAND reader for the iPhone 6S uses RS-232. Which, that's kind of the fault of the, the Chinese manufacturer. Not really the fault of them, but they're, they're just using a cheaper uh, USB host handler. Like, they're not using an actual USB interface. They're using different cheaper methods going through serial uh, which is kind of annoying but what can you do I mean you can't make them change they're going to make them however they want we don't really have much say in it like my NAND reader will not work if I have the DC power spot plugged in did I receive your box uh, what was it Bobby I'll tell you if I got it I haven't gone through all and looked at the names on everything right now. Six S with no power. I don't think so. I'll have to check. I don't I don't think I got a success in the power. Although I think we did a tri star yesterday on success, so maybe that was it.
Oh, yeah, I did. We did it yesterday. Or not yesterday, Friday. It's fixed. I gotta ship it out. <clears throat> it is fixed. That it's not that it's not sharing an interrupt in the BIOS. What do you mean an interrupt? Like how it interrupts for the data to come through? Yeah, Bobby, it was a uh, TriStar on it was damaged. It's fixed, ready to roll. That was the one that we talked about. You you said that the you they had a maximum budget or whatever, and I told you it wouldn't be close. Which was correct. Their maximum budget is far higher than what we needed. All right, so let's start putting some screws back in. See if I can remember where all these go. So in BIOS, what would I look for to, to split that up? Like, how would you split up the interrupt? Because I feel like that's what the problem I'm having is. Like, if I have more than one... Um, if I have more than one uh, device plugged into the computer that has the same protocol, they do not work together. Best to disable all LPT ports and keep one COM port only. If they would just use proper USB host drivers, we wouldn't have any problem with this. Like, it would just work. But they're too cheap to buy an actual USB chip to control all of this. They just use the serial conversion. I'm doing all this and I haven't even checked to see if the charge port works. That confident. <laughs> Watch it not work. It probably won't. Probably be like, fuck you, buddy. I ain't working. Alright, let's see here. Well, let's plug this in and see if I've done extra work or if I'm okay. Moment of truth. Oh, it's pulling amperage. Look at there. Logo! It's pulling 800 milliamps right now, which is because my voltage is too low. Let's unplug, replug. Uh, yeah, still pulling 800 milliamps. That's okay, though. That's normal for this thing. Alright, so let's clean this up. Nice and good alike. Put some new tape down and close this thing up. And 
he tore the top of this thing up trying to get it open. Let me grab my tape real quick. Couple pieces of Tessa and we'll be good to go. I don't have my scissors here. Everything's out at the flea market today. That's one thing I can't wait to not do. Flea market's been a good starting point, but I'm about ready to get out of it. I'm trying to get a second store open to do so. Just waiting on money. Trying to make sure I got enough saved up that I don't have to worry about those first few months while it's open. Keep just one COM port, disable the rest, turn off IRQ sharing, should be good, fix my problems in there. Okay, I'll check it out, Wayne, I appreciate it. Alright, so let's peel our tape up. And that's good to go. This home button is absolute junk. Absolute junk. I say just need you to stay for just a few seconds baby oh you fell out again you piece of shit I'll just lay you on top of your location here These home button condoms suck. Fucking hate you. Keeps falling out. Like right as I'm about to close it, it falls out. Stay, please. No, why are you fucking falling out? The gamer. What's up, the gamer? Who's the gamer? Rubbish home buttons? I agree. I 100% agree. And this one doesn't want to stay in place at all I'm gonna have to get some tape to tape it down here in a second if it won't stay alright we're going for it we're sticking it down alright the home button is completely loose in there but it's in place as long as my adhesive at the bottom holds here, they stay together really well. Try closing it upside down. Uh, we got it back together. Let's hope that front camera works. Where it came apart. I mean, I know it'll work. I just hope it's aligned properly. Alright, so it's back together. It's charging. We'll let it charge up some. And then we'll take this to the flea market and drop it off at Micah. Give him the guy's information so he can call to pick it up. I gotta go pay rent out there. Uh, my head's hurting today. Alright, so while we're waiting, I'm gonna see if I can disable all this port shit. So, disable all the COM ports, except one. So how do we do that? 
So I got the COM LPT ports. I only have COM3 active right now. Which is the only one plugged in currently. So how do we set it to where only COM3 can work? That is the question, yeah. What's up, Cormac? What IRQ? Uh, how do I tell that? Talk to me like I'm stupid. Are we talking Windows? Yes, we are. So I've got port settings, port settings it has, I'm in device manager, but it only shows what I have plugged in. I only have one device plugged in right now. Right now I have COM3. Work day's over. That's good. Oh, in the BIOS? Okay. So when I'm in the BIOS, what do I look for? I would reboot right now, but then you all wouldn't see me. N9T device manager. Zero ports, parallel ports. Air 14 is NAND. It's software corruption. LPT is parallel. I understood that. Okay, cool. So when I'm in there, just disable all ports except one. And that'll, that'll make sure that the interrupt stuff doesn't get mixed up. Is there any way to have two ports active and have two different interrupts? That way I can have two items like my DC power supply and my NAND programmer plugged in? Or do I have to set it as one only? Hey, look, our iPod's turning on. Woohoo! passcode so that kind of makes it hard to do anything I don't think the passcode's on the paperwork either nope all right well guess they're shit all up Yeah, but you have to make sure nothing else is using the IRQ or address. COM 1 and 2 usually use IRQ 4. 3, IRQ 3. 4, IRQ 4. And IRQ 3 as well, but that was way back in Windows 9. X days, 95, 98. Okay. Well, let's look it up real quick. We have the power of Google. So let's Google. Windows 10 IRQ ports. How to view IRQ assignments and conflicts. Default IRQ assignments. IRQ2 is cascaded with IRQ9. 
IRQ3 is split between COM2 and 4. IRQ4 is split between COM1 and 3. IRQ5 is LPT2. IRQ6 is floppy drive. IRQ7 is LPT1. IRQ8 is the real-time clock, RTC. IRQ9 is C2, S-E-E-2. IRQ10 and 11 are open. IRQ12 is PS2 mouse or open. IRQ13 is math compressor, coprocessor, excuse me. IRQ14 is primary hard drive controller, and IRQ15 is secondary hard drive controller. I assume that's for other things. Uh, IRQ assignments in Windows 8. To see the IRQ assignments, hover the mouse over the top of your screen, search control panel, hardware device manager. Okay, I'm in device manager. It doesn't tell me the IRQ setup though. So evidently the in the older ones you can see the IRQ processes, but in this one you can't. Hmm, that's interesting. Right click on the COM port. Okay, I did that. The only option I have is Properties, uninstall, update, blah, blah, blah. Details, hardware IDs, instant pass. I'm looking in the... You're drunk. <laughs> I'm looking at the device properties. How do I know what interrupt it's using? I'm so fancy. You already know. It says location is port 2, hub 3. Whatever that means. It's not overly a big deal. I was just interested as to how I could get around it. This thing seems like it might have a bad battery. Uh, it's already charged up a considerable amount. And there's no way it's charged that much already. Uh, the problem is, is if I have two of the same device plugged in, not same device, but two of the uh, two devices that use the same protocol, um, they won't work together. So right now I have my DC power spot on. It's showing up as COM3. Let's see if it works, because yesterday it didn't work. All right, so it's up. Now I'm gonna try to connect to it. Okay, see, it, I've, I've connected to it, but I'm not connected to it. Like in the actual program, it says device connected, but on my actual DC power supply and what you see on screen, it's not connected because if it was, it would show you the voltage and amperage output right now. Right now I'm pulling 5.3 volts at, at 700 milliamps, but you all can't see that because it's not actually talking. View resources by connection. Ah, there it is. Interrupt requests. Uh huh.
I don't even see it in the interrupt requests. Input outputs. Direct memory access, no. Show hidden devices. All right, let's see, hidden devices. Yeah, I still don't see it in there. It shows my RAID controller. It shows game capture card. It shows my graphics card. It shows high definition audio controller, PCIe controller, Texas Instrument USB 3.0 controller, my Wi-Fi controller, a um, bunch of ACPI compliant system shit. CMOS numerical data processor and system timer. That's it. It doesn't actually show the shit. This is this a serial port? Okay, I don't have a serial port. <laughs> Let me see if I can unplug and plug in the USB here and see if anything. Like it notices when I plug in and plug unplug the connector. I get it sees that immediately. I don't know. No idea. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I haven't figured out what exactly okay is that or not. Okay, here we go. Uh, it says it's a UART bridge. Hold on. UART. What is the function of UART? Here, I'll show you all exactly what it shows me on mine. Boom and boom. So this is what it shows me. It shows a COM3. COM10 is whenever I plug in the, uh, the NAND reader. That's the actual DC power supply right there. It seems like whenever the DC power supply is plugged in, the UART is active regardless if the actual you regardless if the DC power supply is actually on. It seems like it's powered immediately. Check the properties resources tab for IRQ. What's up, Freddy? Let's see. I don't think it has a Yeah, I can assign a different port to it. Like it's COM three right now. It shows, see all these are in use. Two and one are open. 
Yeah, there's no resources tab. Uh, it's plugged directly into the computer. Which one? Which com would you all choose? <laughs> Does the manual tell me which ones? Um, no. From my understanding is you want to be between one and four. Go for 13. Let's see if the program responds to it. See, I can't even... So it only goes to COM7 here. Yeah, so I can't connect to it now because I put it out of out of com range. So seven is the maximum. Com one. Okay, it's com one now. to restart the program. I won't even connect to it now. <laughs> Man, plug it and replug it. Yeah, see it says it's connected but it's not controlling it. That's what doesn't make sense. Like when I hit connect, this area over here will allow me to edit the values, but I can't. When it does actually connect, these values here will become active and I can change them. Even though it says device is connected, it's not really connected. Yeah, see I still can't edit these. That's really my only complaint with this stuff, like, I don't know. I've tried the cameras on all different fucking shit. Port speed. Uh, what should we change to port speed? Change TriStar? I agree. Should we change it to higher or lower? Rehot CPU. Well, this uh, six core AMD is a piece of shit, so we might do that. <laughs> Go higher. 1440. Nope. Still can't talk to it. Let me disconnect or reconnect. Should we go higher than that? Reconnect it and see. Yep, 
Nope. Still doesn't affect it. You made it to live stream just in time, Alex, for me to leave. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, sometimes I can come in and the, the fucking DC power supply connects and works automatically, and other times it, it won't work at all. So, today being one of those days where it's not working at all. <laughs> if I connect. Okay. Com one. Yeah, can't do anything. The display on my DC power supply will flicker like it normally does, but it doesn't switch over. Whoops. Use the sledgehammer persuasion? I've thought about it. Let me turn it off. And then turn it back on. And then we'll set it to COM1. And we'll connect. Nope. Still didn't. The screen flickered like it normally does, but that's about it. Really that late? Yeah, man. We've been streaming for an hour. It didn't take that long to change the charge port out on an iPod. See, the iPod's done. It's charged up. See? Charging. Charging. Yeah. Alright, guys. Um, that's going to end it for today. Uh, we got everybody's donations tallied up. Um... We're gonna write a check on Monday and and split that up between the two and get those sent out, or just donate online. Whatever we could do, make it easier. Everything off, but com one com port. Okay, I'll go into the BIOS and see what I can do. Um, but. Uh, thanks everybody for joining me today and I'm going to run this out to Mike at the flea market and then I'm going to go home and paint some walls in the baby room. Anyway, I will see you all later and hopefully uh, I'm going to play some video games tonight and relax a little bit. But uh, everybody else should have a good day and I guess enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, we got a long weekend in the U.S. with Labor Day so I'll be enjoying my day off tomorrow too. I will see you all Tuesday most likely, and thanks for joining me. Um, also, before I go, I did talk to the distributor, um, which is Union Repair. Um, Union Repair is going to end up sending some stuff in. I'm going to do some reviews on it, and I'm going to be giving away uh, the, some of the products that come in. So if you all tune in... Um, I probably do something like like the page and leave a comment or like the the video and leave a comment and we'll give away randomly uh, some of the devices and, and products that we get in um, I know for sure they're sending uh, the removal tool uh, for underfill uh, they're sending a bunch of stuff like 3d stencils some work mats and different things like that things that I already use so I'll be giving those away um, and things that I may not use myself, but you all may enjoy. So uh, check in for those. We're going to do some some legitimate reviews on them and see what we think of them. Good, bad, indifferent. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, this is the greatest. You should buy it. Everything's great. Um, I do like Union Repair stuff. Um, I've bought quite a few things from them. And I'd have no problem in helping that company out if they keep uh, providing good quality parts. Uh, but I will be doing some reviews on those, so check in. Uh, we'll probably do several videos. I don't want to do them all at once. But uh, we'll kind of group things into common use items, and then we'll go from there. But anyway, um, everybody have a good day, and I will see you later. Bye.